Great, so we're looking at the citizenship and how we became members of countries and actually not a member of a country but a member of a corporation and that we don't actually live on the planet or on the earth of the soil that we find ourselves on because we've been captured in maritime since birth and we're still floating as a vessel in maritime on the open waters of the sea, lost forever until we claim back our standing on the land and our correct status as living humans, living, living men and women, and that we can get our DNA sorted out, claim our DNA, and claim our names back, claim our Christianity back, or the Christian side to the name, and then claim back our global estate, which is our inheritance. Because somehow you might recall that you never signed a contract to live on the planet and pay for it. You yes, never entered such a contract. So how come all of us have to every single day earn money so that we can carry on living and if we don't earn money we'll die, we'll starve. Unless you know how to look after yourself and you're off the grid and you plant food and you do that whole lot. So just a quick one on the names again. This is a certificate of citizenship for South Africa. As a South African citizen, I'm a South African citizen and I'm a New Zealand citizen. And here you will see the name that they used is probably uh, a good name with a surname attached to it, written in normal letters, no uppercase writing whatsoever. But it's a corporation, the Republic of South Africa, that has incorporated that living entity into the corporation, not the all caps, which is rather interesting. But that's Africa, that's what happened there. Now we've got the uh, United, the, the New Zealand one, and here we go, very happily citizen of New Zealand, thank you for becoming a citizen, blah, 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 and it says, Dear Kovacinsvik. So again, uh, just a little bit of extra spacing between the name and the surname. Not that there is a surname, but they've attached one to the surname, because I don't have a surname. Nobody has. And this is the appointment. And then you need to do the little ceremony and say, wow, you know, I swear to king this and queen this and whatever, you do the citizenship ceremony. And guess what else? Here it goes. And who takes the oath? The all caps entity takes the oath, not me. Mm -hmm. Yes. And these are the words you, you must read off when you do your citizen's oath. But similar to court procedures, you're only ever the corporation or the assumed corporate, corporate entity. Yes. In maritime, in all uppercase text. So how can all uppercase text entity take an oath? How can a corporation take an oath? Can a corporation sit on this chair? Can a corporation stand in front of a judge? No. But they make you believe that you are that entity in all uppercase. Okay. So that one took the oath. And let's have a look at who, who got the certificate. Bloody hell. What happened here? Who, who, who's that entity? All uppercase. Yes. And whose name is on the certificate? That's in title case. That's in title case. And the interesting thing is, the surname or the family name, place name, has been detached by writing it in bold. Yes. It's not in normal, in normal text, it's in bold. And the whole rest of the certificate, whatever is important on there is written in bold. Only the name stands on it, and the rest is in italics, and in different languages. And this is just a piece of art. It's a work of art. Containing symbols? Containing symbols, containing different decks, little birds and things, little island here called New Zealand. But what's interesting, it's got a seal on it, which is an authentic seal, printed into the paper, so it is a certificate. And it's been created into a bond. And there is the bond number. So here again is another account created. That they can trade. That has been traded upon and that has been monetized. And the, the entity here does not exist. Well, I think that's an important point. Although a lot of people refer repeatedly to the birth certificate, it is not the only document that's traded. No. Every single thing that you've applied for and that you've written your surname on by signing on behalf of the surname, every single time in your life since you were born that you wrote your name and signed a signature that has been monetized. Every time you have a little slip at a pay point or in a bank, anywhere that your signature appears, that signature has been monetized. And that document that you signed on has been used and a bond has been created. And that's real. 
So what makes it interesting, the word signature refers to a sign of nature. Yes. That's not you. It's a similarity or a simulation of your nature. It's not who you are. Your autograph, on the other hand, is a graph of your autonomy. And AU is a beautiful word. AU is in Australia. AU. Uh, it's a very old word because A, E, I, O, U, the vowels, the five of them, any combination of two of them are very powerful words. Earth is another one. Moon is another one. Very powerful when two of those things are combined next to each other. They make the most powerful words in the universe. How do they carry such power? What? Where does the power display itself, because the effect it has on people when they hear those words? Or? All animals, all mammals on planet Earth can pronounce each and every one of them. It doesn't matter which one it is. Any animal can actually speak by using those five vowels. All animal sounds contain all five of those vowels. In other words, with us as, as humans or as, as men and women, we've got the animal nature within us and technically we can speak to animals and speak with animals and they should technically be able to understand us if we learn how to use the vowels that they're using, but the ones they're using are the five. So animal speak and human speak, when it comes to vowels, those are the powerful ones. And then the way that they created the I E O O I E O U, um, the I is this one here. The O is the circle, the 360 degree circle. The U is the holder of the things. You see, so each number, each letter in the alphabet has got incredibly deep symbolism attached to it. So uh, that's why they're powerful words when you combine them into any particular word. Moon, Australia, AU. And AU happens to be the symbol for gold, which is also interesting. And AU is an authority. AU is an authorship. And it's a very powerful word because whoever's got the authority is, is, is the ruler. Hey, it's, it's the one that's got the A and the U and the A. So this makes it incredibly interesting. And in terms of uh, the whole idea of signature and autograph, until you've learned what your name really is and how to write it correctly, you have never been addressed by anybody correctly since you were born. Every document that's come through your mailbox, every do document that's come into your life has never been addressed to you because they don't have a contract with you They've got an assumed contract, and that assumed contract consists of one particular thing. In commerce and in contract law, silence is consent. And because you never spoke out, you never used your, your declaratory power of your voice to say something, it's assumed that you said yes. And this comes to the rescission of vows and the cancelling of your contracts. It's an action step, it's a physical thing that you need to get off your butt and go and do. And rescind those contracts, cancel those contracts, but you need to speak out. And again, speak. EA, the element of earth in it. Out. OU. Okay, so here, here, here we go with the, with the vowels again. Action. It's got IO at the end of it again. That, that's something that's busy moving. Something's happening. And we need to learn how to use those words and then combine them with our deeds. And then go and do something called what I refer to as a live life claim, which is the uh, recording of your name correctly and also claiming your DNA and your ancestral DNA. And that's the interesting thing because while we call it the live life claim, if you don't lay a claim to your life, someone else will and someone else has. So until you actually claim your own life back for yourself, your life will never be yours.